one big thing. Willie Taggart has coached three games for Florida State. He needs to be fired. Chip Kelly, same thing at UCLA. Three games, get, get rid of him. Scott Frost in Nebraska, maybe he gets to stay after an 0-2 start because of the injury to his quarterback. We'll see. Just so we're clear here, none of those coaches should be fired. But based on reactions to the start of the season, it's not as if those suggestions haven't been made. And I'm not just talking about crazy people on Twitter and message boards. I'm talking about smart writers who cover the sport, tweeting out what it would cost to buy out coaches like Taggart. What are we doing? This is real life. This is not how it works. We have grown so impossibly immune from common sense and reality in these situations that it blows my mind. Look, I have seen solid chunks of Florida State's three games, and they look a mess. I mean bad. But Willie Taggart is the football coach. That's who the university hired. If you want to have a referendum now on why are they hired a coach with a losing record in the first place, it's a little late because he's the guy. So take a deep breath here. I don't know when we got to the point where fans got this impatient, and maybe that's not what's new, but the idea that the face and leader of your program was as easy to replace as a styrofoam cooler. Hey, this one's busted. Go to the gas station, get a new one. Well, that feels new, and it's ridiculous. It's a reflection of this new place we've landed where when we get mad at something, the solution is someone has to be fired. How about everyone relax for a second? In the past few years, how many coaches in big time spots has this been suggested about? Hell, two of them squared off Saturday night in Austin. Clay Helton, he had to go at USC almost from the start, right? He was out over, over skis, the job was too big for him. Well, then he got things sorted out, but he just lost to Tom Herman, who lost the first game of each of his first two seasons at Texas to Maryland. And that had natives mad that they had won the bidding war with LSU to get him. But the Longhorns thumped the Trojans Saturday, so I guess Herman is cool for now. The biggest issue at the moment is that there feels like such a massive gap between the top and everybody else that it has college football fans even more irrational than normal. Chris Fowler tweeted this in the wee hours of Sunday morning, and I agree. From the college football macro point of view, the downer of the first three weeks is stronger than ever since that a very small number of teams look capable of winning the college football playoff trophy. Lack of fresh blood and regional diversity is never idea, ideal. Our version of Warriors versus the Cavs, but hey, Somebody step up and prove me wrong, close quote. Alabama is so much better than most of the teams it's playing right now, it's ridiculous. Ole Miss beat them a couple years in a row, 2014, 2015. Saturday, the Rebels scored first, then they gave up 62 unanswered at home, and that is what everyone is chasing. And guess what? You are not likely to catch it. They've got a decade head start if you're starting over. And in the case of somebody like Florida State, who isn't that far removed from having been in the discussion, I understand the despair of feeling light years away from it. But that is the grim reality of college football. The backslide can happen at warp speed. The build, the build back tends to take time and patience. Those are two commodities which are precious but ought to be invested in your new coach because you can't just go down to the corner store to get a new one. If you do, your program might just look like you did.